What's up guys, DRock1992 here. For this next video, I'm going to be talking about the movies, the major movies that came out in November. Uh, major movies, smaller movies with well-known actors, stuff like that. So I'm going to be going into that, and I'm going to be previewing the December movies. So November brought, a, brought about a pretty good month in movies, definitely. There were some good... Um, there were some good choices, for sure. And the first one i got to start with is the one I went to see in theaters. I went to see it with my dad and a few other friends. Uh, the new Bond film, Spectre. Uh, now, Spectre, overall, thus far, it has made $751.2 million on a 240 or 250 you know, 245 to 250 million dollar budget. That's very good. It's one of the most expensive movies ever made, actually, believe it or not. The most expensive movie is one of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Um, but yeah, it is... Spectre was awesome. I, um, I really liked the movie a lot. Um, critics weren't thrilled... It got 64% on Rotten Tomatoes, which isn't a bad review at all, but definitely it wasn't Skyfall. Um, a lot of people compared it unfavorably to Skyfall. Um, and I'll even acknowledge that I didn't think Spectre was as good as Skyfall. Not quite as good, but still a very good movie on its own. And uh, <clears throat> So yeah, Spectre was a... I gave it a four and a half out of five stars in my review of the movie, which you can see on my channel. And, uh, so yeah, Spectre was very good for, for me. It's the only movie I went to see in November. Um, next movie is the Peanuts movie. Now, a lot of people know about Charles Schultz and his comic book strip, The Peanuts. And a lot of the specials, you know, you had your Halloween special and you had your Christmas special as the two big ones, I think, for, for the Peanuts. Now the Peanuts get their own movie. And that movie turned out to be a pretty big success. So far, it's done well. $99 million. On a $99 million budget, $126.1 million. So they have to be happy with the results. I mean, excuse me. They have to be happy with so far with what it's doing. Um, but yeah, the Peanuts movie is definitely, um, was definitely a success. 86% um, on Rotten Tomatoes. That's a very nice review for uh, this movie. It created a lot of nostalgia for, um, for fans, for sure, of the Peanuts. Next movie I'm going to talk about is Love the Coopers. Love the Coopers has an all-star cast. Um, John Goodman, Alan Arkin, Ed Helms, Diane Keaton, Anthony Mackie, and Amanda Seyfried, Olivia Wilde. Brand name actors and actresses that have had success in other movies. Just the movie that, this movie that, it, that they were paired up with? each other wasn't a success it's been a box office it's been a box office disappointment on a budget of 17 million it's only made 21.1 million so far and critically just a 21 percent on Rotten Tomatoes so this movie was not very good and a lot of people, I, I've heard people put it up there with some of the worst Christmas films of all time. And, uh, excuse me. So, Love the Coopers was a disappointment of a film. Let's see. Next movie I'm going to talk about is uh, The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2. This was another movie I really wanted to see. I haven't gotten to see it yet. Maybe sometime I will, but part two, it's the final part in the uh, in the Hunger Games series. I reviewed the first three Hunger Games movies. You can check those out on this channel. 
Um, and I really enjoyed part one a lot. I really did enjoy it. Uh, it made me excited to see part two and all that. <clears throat> but um, the whole crew comes back too. Jennifer Lawrence, Liam Hemsworth, Josh Hutcherson, Woody Harrelson, Elizabeth Banks, Julianne Moore, Philip Seymour Hoffman. This is actually... Philip Seymour Hoffman's last film role, the late great Philip Seymour Hoffman, Donald Sutherland, uh, as well as in this movie, is in this movie, and it's done well. It's done well. 160 million dollar budget, 448 million overseas, uh, around the world so far. Um, this weekend coming up will be its third weekend in theaters, and uh, it'll drop, but it's still doing pretty good. Um, on Rotten Tomatoes, it's done very serviceably. 71% on Rotten Tomatoes. A nice review for it. And it is the final version of the Hunger Games series, although there are prequels that are being discussed. There is a prequel being discussed for the Hunger Games. Um, or a, uh, a potential sequel as well. So, but probably a prequel will be made about the movie um so that's hunger games mocking j part two uh next movie i'm going to talk about is the second collaboration between brad pitt and angelina jolie and it's a movie called by the sea it's a drama movie and th these two are the well-known actors of course you might remember that brad pitt and angelina jolie grouped up together in mr and mrs smith which came out in 2005, and there was a lot of uh, drama and there was a lot of controversy from that movie because that's where Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie met. And, uh, well, most of you probably know the story, my cat. So, the movie itself only a 29% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, so not very good, not very good rating, and it's done bad at the box office. Ten million dollar budget, a one and a half million dollars overall made in the box office. So this is definitely a film that nobody's gone to see so far. And that is by the sea. Uh, the good dinosaur. The good dinosaur came out in November. And it's another Pixar movie. Remember, Inside Out came out later, uh, earlier this year. This is the first time in Pixar's history that they've released two films in the same year. So The Good Dinosaur came out. And from what I had heard, this was a movie fraught with controversy. It was supposed to come out a year ago, in May of 2014, I believe. But there was a lot of issues with... There was a lot of issues... They basically had to go back to the drawing board with this movie. So it's incredible that this movie actually got made. And on a budget of $200 million, it's made $87.1 million so far. It'll probably, it'll make over the $200 million budget. Because it, I think it'll only be going into its second opening, it into its second weekend uh, coming up. But, um... Reception on Rotten Tomatoes has been solid, 75%. Not up there with the great Pixar movies ever, like the Toy Stories, The Incredibles, all those movies, but still very good for The Good Dinosaur. Um, next film I'm going to talk about is... Let me see here... Um, the Night Before uh, is the next movie I'm going to talk about. The Night Before was another movie I was anticipating to go see. Haven't seen it yet. Um, my kitty. He wants to be in the movies too. He he's got a big dream to be a uh, movie star. So, The Night Before stars uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, well-known actor these days, Seth Rogen, one of my favorite comedians going, and Anthony Mackie. 
Uh, these are the three main characters. This is this movie's about. Um, <laughs> my cat wants to be in the movies again. So, yeah. Um, this movie's about these three guys unite every Christmas and have fun on Christmas Eve, and they're reuniting for one last time because Seth Rogen's characters is a dad. He's going to be a father. And uh, they spend their last Christmas Eve together, and it, needless to say, it's a Seth Rogen comedy, so a lot of hijinks ensue. And this movie's done pretty good. $25 million budget, $26.3 million on the, at the box office. It'll be going, I think, into, like, its second or third weekend, so it's going to make... It's going to make more than, um... It's going to make a profit for uh, the studio and all that. But the movie overall got a 66% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is good. Which is a good percentage for a comedy movie. So yeah, the night before, um, definitely a success. There was a smaller movie called Secret in Their Eyes. And this has an all-star cast. Julia Roberts one of the great actresses of our generation. Nicole Kidman, one of the great actresses of our generation. And Chuyatel Ejiofor. Um, that's how you pronounce his name, I believe. These are the three main actors that are in secret in their eyes. Um, this is a thriller film. And needless to say, with all that talent, the film didn't turn out to be a good film. According to Rotten Tomatoes, it got a 41%. So certainly disappointing for that big cast that uh, that was in this movie. And on a $19.5 million budget, it made $18.7 million so far. I mean, it'll make more money as it goes during its box office run, but it's not going to make an overwhelming profit or anything like that. But yeah, that's Secret in Their Eyes. The next movie is one of the big movies of the year so far. Probably one of the biggest movies of the year, and that would be Creed. Creed is the seventh version. It's a spin-off movie of the Rocky movies. So it is a spin-off, and it's a sequel to the Rocky to the in the Rocky franchise. So it is technically the seventh Rocky movie. It has Michael B. Jordan as Adon uh, Apollo Creed's son, um, <clears throat> who's trying to prove himself in the boxing ring. The guy never knew his father, and he gets training from Rocky himself. Sylvester Stallone comes back as Rocky. So, it's a story about that. And... On a budget of $35 million, it's made $48.6 million. So it'll go into its second weekend, which it'll probably do good. It'll do good in its second weekend and all that. Maybe a bit of a drop-off, but not too bad. But yeah, I mean, this movie turned out to be a big success. Um, It's going to be a big success financially. Critically, it has a 93% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Very good rating. And I have heard that there are talks about Sylvester Stallone getting an Academy Award nomination for his role as Rocky, his Best Supporting Actor. Uh, he got an Academy Award nomination for the, for the first Rocky, I believe. I don't think he won it, but he did get a first, he did get an Academy Award nomination. Um. Yeah, he got nominated for two Academy Awards, Best Original Screenplay and Best Actor. Because um, he wrote Rocky, the Rocky story. But yeah, Rock, uh, Creed was a big success. And then the final movie I'm going to talk about is a movie that probably should have been released in October. Victor Frankenstein. Uh, this is about this is a tale about the creation of Frankenstein. It's told from Victor Frankenstein's assistant Igor. It's told from his perspective, and 
It stars James McAvoy as Victor Frankenstein and Daniel Radcliffe. Harry Potter himself as Igor. Uh, these two are the main characters in the movie. Overall, it's done, it has not done well. $40 million budget, $15.8 million box office. I think in the U.S., it only made about... In the U.S., I believe it only made two point. It made two point four million in its opening weekend. Two point four million, three point four million over its first five days, and it broke the record set by a movie called "Won't Back Down" in 2012 for the lowest opening gross in over 2,500 theaters. That's bad numbers, and I think this movie got affected by. Um, not being released in Halloween, because around Halloween, because this is definitely a Halloween type movie. Plus, there are a lot of Halloween type movies, a lot of monster uh, character movies that have failed miserably at the box office um, and with fans. There was a movie called I Frankenstein that came out just last year that was critically it got it. A lot of people thought that was a horrible movie. So, yeah, Victor Frankenstein did not do well at all. It has not done well at all. It probably will not do well. It's going to be a box office failure in the U.S. There's no doubt about that. So that's it for the movies that came out, the big movies that came out in November. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I covered all of them. Now I'm going to talk about a little preview about what's coming up in December. Uh, first movie that's coming out, it's coming out tomorrow actually, is Krampus. And for those of you who don't know, Krampus is the evil version of Santa. Basically, if you don't believe in Christmas, Krampus I think is this European tradition or something like that. Um, it's a European tradition, and, um, it's got some recognizable names. Adam Scott is in the movie, David Koshner, who's been in a lot of Will Ferrell comedies, and a lot of comedies in general. Conchata Ferrell, who played in Two and a Half Men, uh, as the maid in that, in that, uh, series. But yeah, Krampus is, uh, it's from Alpine folklore. So Krampus is, if you're bad, if you don't believe in Christmas, if you're not having fun, this guy will come and kill you, basically. Something like that. It'll terrorize you. He's the evil version of, of Santa. Uh, another movie that's coming out in the month of December is In the Heart of the Sea. Directed by the great Ron Howard, who's had a lot of films in hit to his credit. He's one of the best directors out there. Chris Hemsworth, Thor himself, is going to be in this movie. And it's going to be a retelling. It's going to be a telling of Moby Dick. This is the story about how uh, Moby Dick was encountered, basically, uh, essentially. So... It, I've seen the trailers for this movie. It looks like an epic movie. It looks like a movie you need to see in the theaters. I probably, I don't think I'll see it. I mean, maybe, I don't know, but it looks like a movie you need to see in theaters because it's that epic and grand in, in scale. Uh, the next movie I'm going to talk about, directed by comedy director Adam McKay, The Big Short about the housing bubble of 2008, I believe. Um, it's about the financial crisis of 2007 to 2010 by the buildup of the housing and credit bubble, the recession that we recently had. It has got a huge... It has got an all-star cast. Christian Bale, Batman himself, um, Steve Carell, Ryan Gosling and Brad Pitt. Four brand name actors who are A-list stars, pretty much. All in the same movie. The Big Short, um, probably anticipated because of that cast. 
And then, the moment pretty much every fan's been waiting for. A lot of people have been waiting for this movie. It's coming out December 14th in Los Angeles, coming out December 18th worldwide, and that is the new Star Wars movie, Star Wars The Force Awakens. A lot of people, a lot of people want this movie to be great because of the prequels. A lot of people didn't like the prequels. I personally didn't mind them. Um, I watched them a long time ago. I haven't watched them in ages, but I'm going to actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch all six of the Star Wars movies, and I'm going to review them all. But I am looking, I'm actually, I've actually got a little more excitement than what I had before for Star Wars. I'm uh, looking forward to this movie. I'm looking to see how, how good it'll be. The Sucker That Has to Open, there's two movies that open up against Star Wars The Force Awakens. Uh, well, first off, The Big Short and In the Heart of the Sea are both facing off against each other in De December 11th, the week of that, that week. I think In the Heart of the Sea is going to wipe, I think they're going to win, definitely. Krampus, I don't know how well it's going to do. I heard a guy, I've heard some talk about how it might not do as well because people aren't familiar with Krampus in the U.S. It's from European folklore. But yeah, the 18th, December 18th, Star Wars is going to dominate. It is going to dominate at the box office in, in, that, in that month. But there's some good counter-programming. Alvin and the Chipmunks, the road chip, uh, is coming out December 18th. It is the fourth uh, installment in the Alvin and the Chipmunks film series. There's been four of those movies. So that's coming out. And then the Tina Fey, Amy Poehler comedy, Sisters. Now this is about their whole childhood home. They're both sisters. Their childhood home, their childhood home has been sold. And they're looking to have one last party, one last go around before the house gets sold officially. So, an Amy Poehler, Tina Fey comedy. The trailers so far have been okay. Um, hopefully, they didn't put all the jokes in the uh, in the trailers and all that. That's what some comedies are guilty of, just keeping all their jokes in the trailer. But. I'm kind of looking forward to it. I'd, I probably won't see it in theaters, but I'm kind of looking forward to it, to be honest with you. Um, and then, December 25th, Christmas. There's going to be four, there's going to be six movies coming out. Four in wide release and two in limited release. Let's talk about the two in limited release. The Hateful Eight, the latest Quentin Tarantino movie. His eighth directorial outing, I believe. Yeah, I, I believe it's his eighth directorial outing. It is about... Um, it's got Samuel L. Jackson, who's in everything. Kurt Russell, Jennifer Jason Lee, um, and a lot of other uh, Quentin Tarantino regulars. The Hateful Eight is coming out December 25th in 70 millimeter. Uh, film format, which is how a lot of movies got made before. How a lot of movies got in uh, in theaters and all that. But uh, but yeah, I mean, um, and then it's going to come out worldwide. It's going to have a wider release without the seventy millimeter on January eighth of next year. So. Definitely, that movie will be anticipated by a lot of Tarantino fans. And then the movie The Revenant. The Revenant, a lot of people are saying Leonardo DiCaprio is going to get an Oscar for this movie. He's been nominated for five, I believe, and he's never won. A lot of people, there are people that are saying he could win for The Revenant for this one, uh, for this movie. And, uh,. Coming out December 25th, wide, wider release in January. It's going to be January 8th, actually. So those two movies are going to open up against each other. 
um, those two movies, wide release, are going to open up against each other. And limited release, they're going to open up against each other. So that's kind of neat. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is the lead guy. It is directed by Alejandro G. Inuratu, who... I reviewed one of his films, actually, Birdman, which I thought was a good film. Definitely a very good film. Uh, and it's got Tom Hardy as well. Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy. Uh, two of the best actors working today, so... It's a very anticipated film. <clears throat> and it's about... It's set in the 1800s. There's this guy... Who, the Leonardo DiCaprio's character gets attacked by a bear, left for dead for mem by members of his hunting team, and... The Leonardo DiCaprio takes revenge. He is looking for revenge against the people who abandoned him. And I think took his son, too, I believe. Uh, this is set in 18, 1823. Now the four wide-release movies that are coming out Christmas. Um, and there's some good ones. First of all, the movie Concussion. This is a movie about the NFL and its controversy with the whole concussion issue. Will Smith, of all actors, is going to be in this movie. Uh, he's going to be the lead guy. Alec Baldwin's in the movie. Luke Wilson plays Roger Goodell, who's the NFL commissioner. Albert Brooks is in the movie. Uh, he's done a lot of guest spots on The Simpsons. Uh, but Concussion, yeah, it's about the whole concussion issue and the doctor who discovered the uh, the that NFL players were having concussions and all that. Uh, Bennett Omalu, the forensic pathologist who fought against efforts by national by the NFL to suppress his research on the brain damage suffered by professional football players. So that is coming out December 25th. It's been out, actually. November 10th, it was out on AFI Fest. On an AFI Fest and all that. And on Rotten Tomatoes, based on 17 reviews, it has a 65%, so not too bad. It'll probably go up, up or down, depending on what the wide critical reaction is going to be. The next movie on the list is Daddy's Home. This is the movie I'm looking forward to. It's got Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg. It is their second collaboration after... Their first collaboration was The Other Guys... The Other Guys was a funny movie. Daddy's Home is the next collaboration. And it's about Will Ferrell, who's a stepdad to his kids. And he's a good stepdad, trying to be a good stepdad. But Mark Wahlberg's guy is the dad, a deadbeat dad, trying to get back into the picture. So Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg battle out for the affection of their kids. So Daddy's Home, that is, um, <clears throat> I'm looking forward to that film a lot. Um, and from what I saw with the trailers, it looks pretty funny. Once again, hopefully the jokes aren't in, just in the trailer. The next movie is Joy, and it's directed by David O. Russell, and it's got his usual cohorts, Jennifer Lawrence, Robert De Niro, and Bradley Cooper all reunited in this movie. They were in Silver Linings Playbook together, and they were all in American Hustle. Robert De Niro only had a cameo, but they were all in American Hustle. Joy is about this woman named Joy Mangano, Mangano uh, who invented the Miracle Mop. Uh, she's an inventor. She was a struggling mom of three children. And it tells her story, basically. It's a biographical comedy-drama film. But three big names in Jennifer Lawrence, Robert De Niro, and Bradley Cooper. Uh, so definitely good names. Good brand names. Bradley Cooper needs a hit. Because Aloha was a big failure and Burnt wasn't a big, fi wasn't a big success. So Bradley Cooper needs a hit. And Jennifer Lawrence has been doing good with uh, The Hunger Games. And Robert De Niro himself had a pretty moderate hit with The Intern, with Anne Hathaway. So those three superstars, 
in one film. And then the final movie that's coming out December 25th, wide release, is a remake. Is a reboot. A remake of Point Break. Uh, Point Break was a 1991 movie, I believe, with Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze. I believe. And Patrick Swayze and Keanu Reeves were the two guys in the movie. And it is going to be a remake of... Yeah, it's a remake of Point Break from 1991. So it's going to be released December 25th. It was it was released in China December 4th. And... Uh, but yeah, this movie... Um, the two people that are playing the main characters are two guys... Edgar Ramirez, who I think I've heard of before, and Luke Bracey, who I haven't heard of, I, I believe. But we'll have to see how this looks. Um, there have been remakes before that have failed. Uh, for example, uh, Total Recall. The first version was in 1990 with Arnold Schwarzenegger, and that was a big success. The remake, not so much, with Kate uh, Kate Beckinsale and a few other characters in the movie too. Colin Farrell, I believe. Um, so we'll have to see how that goes. And that's it. That's it for the big movies coming out in December. And the movies I reviewed for November. So that's it for this video. DRock1992, out.